good okay uh good morning everyone welcome to the first presentation of the day uh this is the leadership stream so looking forward to some good uh presentations in here today um we'll be beginning with parmita golkar from alumicem Parmita Golkar is an environmental professional with a passion in personal development and leadership. She currently works as technical sales and business development for Illumichem, and she spends her free time educating herself and others on the topic of leadership development and personal leadership. She has spoken on the topic of leadership and business development at organizations such as WYCA. Uh, and the title of her presentation is Best Leadership is Self-Leadership. Let's give a warm welcome to Parmita. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is very exciting. I hope you all had your coffee, so you're excited and ready to go. Um, as uh, Natasha mentioned, good morning. My name is Parmita, and I work um, as a, the technical sales and business development for Alumicam in our lower mainland area. Um, but today I'm going to talk about, uh, as obviously the topic of my conversation, uh, my presentation is self-leadership is the best leadership. Um, and I'm going to challenge, um, I'm going to challenge the traditional thoughts about leadership. Um, funny enough, I am not a manager in our company. I do have a boss. And um, so what I'm going to be presenting today is not necessarily like coming from the perspective of leadership in that sense. So it's a different approach to leadership. Um, and yeah, let's jump right into it. But before I'm actually going to do a little interactive exercise with all you guys, uh, the lovely team back there, they're going to pull up a um, slide that you can scan the QR code. And I want you to tell me what do you think what leadership means to you, if you can say that in one word. Um, I don't know if that's yes. So you can uh, either get into that website um and then slash forward that's the code that you can enter this is my first time doing this way of presenting so let's hope that it will work out well um and then can we then switch to the other page where they can see the answers as well yes uh did you activate that as well is everyone able to, was everyone able to get into the website? No? No? Okay. Um, Uh, I just want everyone to be able to see the answers or but is anyone getting any did I, anyone was able to log into that it will ask yeah you did okay perfect one person okay two people that's good so yeah if in one word you can just say uh, what leadership means to you and it should populate all the answers and the word that that has been repeated the most will pop up as a like um, the largest with the largest uh, font. Let me see if I can pull it. Oh, okay. I gotta go. Okay. Love technology. <laughs> Activate. There we go. Sorry, that was my fault. Yeah, if you can uh, just say what leadership means to you in one word, and the response should pop right up. I wonder why the answers are not showing there. You guys still can't see that. Well, that sucks. Well, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show it through my my laptop. So this is something that. <laughs> 
I was expecting <laughs> to be on there, but that's okay. We see a lot of words. What does leadership mean to you? Um, the biggest one coming up here is guidance. It means that it was um, repeated a couple of times. Also, you've mentioned it's action, service, inspiration, solver, support, respect. I see a lot of positive words. This is great. I didn't have the same perspective towards leadership. Um, modeling, strength, um, inspire, um, all that, which is which are all great words. But um, you all seem to have a great perspective on leadership. I used to think that leadership is like um, the military commander type, like that's leadership. And I was like, oh my God. Um, so if we can go back to my slides, and here, this is majority of the answers we received from your responses. So everyone has a positive perspective. And I guess majority of you guys know that leadership comes from um, being wanting to genuinely help others, right? Whereas from my perspective, it was it was more so like, yeah, the, the typical, uh, where is my, there we go. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's what I thought so a true leader is the picture on the bottom but what I thought leadership is the one on the top and we all know that we don't want to have that boss who's like tell us to do this that and that and then they don't want to be on the trenches with us and they don't want to do the work themselves and you're like have you done it yourself um so um but in this presentation my goal is to show you that there are different meanings and layers to leadership, right? Leadership is, yeah, obviously that and having having a leader in an organization that will guide you. But uh, let's start with like first defining what leadership means. Um, William C.H. Prentice, who was an American psychologist, says that um, defines leadership as Defines leadership as the, accomplish, the accomplishment of a goal through the direction of human assistance and um, a human and social achievement that stems from leaders' understanding of his or her fellow workers and the relationship of their individual goals to the group's aim. So nowhere in this uh, definition is talked about power or position, which is pretty interesting, right? Um, and he also says that to be a successful leader, um, there are two basic lessons that you need to learn. The first one is that people are complex and people are different. And that's a pretty common sense, right? Uh, but it's very interesting because um, as we get deeper into this uh, and into this presentation, um, leading, all leading is, is influence actually. And regardless of what our position is within an organization, we all can have certain levels of influence. So if leadership doesn't require power or position and all leadership is, is influence, then does that mean anyone can lead? What do you guys think? Can anyone lead? Yeah? Yes, anyone can lead. Um, and if you think about it, sub, uh, like without even knowing, we lead our families, we lead our communities, we lead our friends, our colleagues, um, the volunteer organizations that we work in, because we are constantly having influence in all those um, all those areas. Um, and the whole idea around personal leadership um, comes from that because we have so much influence in our day-to-day, -day, um, I think the first thing we can focus on is um, developing personal leadership. So, and that's what it's kind of like personal leadership is before wanting to lead anyone else, I think we got to get uh, good at mastering ourselves and leading ourselves. Um, so, and again, after I did all that, I guess, um, reading and getting around great leaders that were able to mentor me, I learned that, okay, before I want to make an impact on anyone else, I got to learn how to master myself and how, uh, how I can be uh, the best leader I can be uh, personally. Um, and now let's think of the leadership as an onion. Uh, now we're peeling the layers back, right? 
getting even further into the core of leadership. Um, there is a model that was actually derived or it was developed called the 3P model by Schooler or Scaler. I watched YouTube a couple of times last night to make sure I pronounce his name properly. But um, yeah, Scaler it is. We're going to go with that. He, developed, he has developed a model. It's called the 3P leadership, which is that, which is pretty cool. Because in this model, uh, as you can see, the core of that model, it's personal leadership, then goes to private and then public. Um, and I think too often we focus on private and public leadership compared to the personal. And as you can see, it's also divided into, I can't take this with me. Okay, I'm gonna scream. Um, it's also divided into two layers of inner and outer um, levels of leadership, okay? For the sake of time and for, for the sake of this, okay. For the sake of time and for the sake of this presentation, I'm just going to cover the personal, the personal, um, the personal aspect. Um, okay. So, um, so we talked about that the, these are divided into um, inner and outer levels. Um, Scalar also says that personal leadership is also the most uh, influential of all the three levels. And uh, it's because the positive change at the personal level can ripple into uh, the two outer levels as well, okay? And there are three elements to, um, to the personal leadership. So we we're talking about the core of this circle. Um, the three elements of personal leadership is the technical perspective or the technical element, attitude towards others and self-mastery. Um, technical elements, obviously, like if we want to grow and if we want to be able to be influential, we need to um, hone our craft and know what we're talking about. Um, so, but in this technical uh, element doesn't only have to be hard skills. It can also be, um, let me go to the next one. Yes. The technical elements is, um, a combination of soft skills and hard skills, but the, but most, most importantly, it's knowing what your weaknesses are. So it's not really what you're good at, it's what you're not really good at. And, and knowing that and trying to get better in that. Um, and then in the soft skills, which I think it's kind of like the most important one, especially when we're out there and making an impact. And, um, and it's funny because again, I'm not coming from a management position. Uh, I think what I do on a daily basis involves a lot of influence and a lot of leadership because I deal with a lot of different people. All those people have different personalities, different operators, different um, demographics, different ages. And uh, in order for me to be some, somewhat influential and build a relationship with my clients, which are um, some of you guys actually in this room, I hope I am influential, uh, but is actually to um, really, really know where my weaknesses are, whether that's in my technical skill set or whether that's in my, um, and my like essentially hard skills and whether that's in my soft skills, right? Um, and I think soft skills, like a lot of interpersonal um, skills can really, really help us, um, whether in our interrelationships with our coworkers and colleagues or whether we're leading a team. The second element to that is um, attitude towards others. So this is actually what I'm really, really passionate about and what I think it's very, very important in any organization. Um, this one is the, the personal leadership comes from thinking that this is about um, your attitude towards others is about believing that other people are as important as you are, right? And this is so different from a... Um, like a selfish approach because we are also always thinking, oh, I am the I'm the star of the show. I am like, if a project is going well, I did it. You know, we're not gonna give enough. Sometimes we don't give enough credits to our coworkers. I'm I'm definitely guilty of that. Um, but if we if we believe that other people are as important as you are as as we are or as you are, um, then our attitude towards them is a great foundation to build trust. And a big portion of personal leadership, I think, is building trust. Um, and uh, then when you already have that trust built, it's so much easier to walk towards a shared vision within an organization. Um, and that 
can be again within our in in, in like collaborative groups whether you're working uh, on a project together with your co-workers or whether you're leading a team as the official leader of that team um and uh, like again building trust how that now how trust is built is by um letting people know that their thoughts are valid um their opinions are seen and not because of the certain sex race or background they are they're going to be disregarded or discarded right and um i i, I speak of a place of a privilege but i had and the reason i'm sharing this this um I guess self leadership is best leadership. Is I know that the 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 theme in um, this year EOCP that the EOCP is trying to maintain this year is change doesn't have to be scary in diversity in water and wastewater. Um, and um, anyways, the reason I say I come from a very uh, of a place of privilege is that because the team I work with they're great. I always feel seen. I always feel heard, and um, I never feel like oh because I'm a younger girl in my way younger than my team and I'm a girl and uh, I'm a woman of color like they don't they're not gonna hear me out which is great right and um, the goal out of this pre presentation is how we can create those environments that people are excited to work with us you know they're like oh yeah water and wastewater that's a great industry and that's actually something I heard like I spoke with a couple of different people they were like you know what Oil and gas. I'm sorry if everyone here is from oil and gas, but like they're like oil and gas. No, yeah, they don't really treat women well, or they don't see them as. Where water and wastewater, yeah, they're great. Like I don't, I never had an issue, and honestly, I feel the same way. I never had an issue, uh, with like feeling that I'm not a older gentleman in my 40s, and yes, um, so, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then that that also like building trust and a positive attitude. To, attitude towards others uh, creates room for more cooperation uh, okay I, I get oh, I get this question asked a lot from the people my friends my family um, they're like so how does it really feel to work in a male dominated industry and my answer is honestly it feels freaking amazing and let me tell you why because of that uh, again, as I mentioned, I'm a part of a great team. This is actually last year at EOCP. Uh, it was a Hawaiian themed uh, dinner, which is the awards dinner is tonight. Uh, and that is my boss, Mark, on my right. And that is Glenn, my coworker on the left. And we have a very small team, but I am extremely privileged because uh, these two guys honestly make like first of all I, when I started working with Alumicam in this industry I didn't really have a lot of um, water and wastewater background I came from mining which is not too different but um, so yeah this is how it feels to work in a male dominated industry and I think if we can create more of these feelings for uh, for for um, to create diversity in our work environments then more people are excited to work in water and wastewater uh, and it's funny because now when I say, oh, it's amazing to work in water and wastewater and people are like, what? It's, it's exciting to work in wastewater. Like, I'm like, yeah, I get sk stinky sometimes when I go into wastewater plants and like, it's not the most like glorious environment, <laughs> but people always treat me really well. I have great, uh, I have a great team that I work with. They support me. They empower me. Um, and they, uh, they see me and they give, they give me wings to go out and do what I'm really good at doing. Um, now, again, what does it feel to work in a male-dominated industry? That's also what it feels like. I know that was a little fun Hawaiian theme, but that's like another trade show that I did with these guys. And um, again, when someone comes in, uh, they, they see me as the same as I know I'm shorter and I wear glasses, but outside of the figures, they see me as the same as Glenn and Mark, which is freaking fabulous. And I know we live in 2024, so that shouldn't be really an issue. Um, so, and my, I guess my purpose out of this slide is that you guys can be Mark and Glenn for someone else. Um, and I think um, with how uh, industry is changing and evolving, we all play an important role um, to invite more people into this industry. And that is leadership there. That is influence. Um, last, ooh. 
yes, sorry, this is one slide ahead of me. I was like, what? Where are we going? Where are we going? Okay, perfect. Uh, I think I will be done sooner than nine yeah. minutes. But um, are you guys still awake? Yeah? yeah, a little bit. Someone had their coffee. They're like, yeah, I'm fine. Okay, thank you. I feel very encouraged. Um, but yeah, the, the last element to personal leadership is self-mastery. And um, honestly, I think this is the most important element in personal leadership. Um, and personal leadership um, starts by developing self-awareness, knowing what our values are and being really authentic to ourselves. Um, and it's also, um, I think self-mastery comes from taking 100% ownership of our choices. And that from a perspective of someone who works and has a boss, I think all of us have a, have a boss uh, or like upper management. Um, it's very important that if things go wrong, we don't point fingers and we're like, if something is going wrong, I'm also responsible for this. Um, and I think um, if you want to see change in our workplaces, we have to be the change. Uh, we can't expect everyone else to change and um, then bibbidi bobbidi boo things will change. No, I believe that um, unfortunately we can't control anyone else, but the only thing we can control is ourselves. And for those of you who are control freaks like me, that's really, really tough because you want to make sure everything is like, you know, um, so yeah, we can't control anything outside of us, but we can control how we respond to situations and scenarios, um, to the, the to um like little conflicts we have with our coworkers, with our upper management, and um and that's why I think um developing our personal skills is very very important, um and having that self leadership because if you know how to um master conflict resolution then our day-to-day -day will be so much easier right like it's so much, it's just so much nicer to go to work thinking that oh i have to see ben again I, I hope none of you guys are bens but like i'm just saying just a ben or a joe whatever jessica anyone jessica okay out of that's 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 not important that's a tangent but it would be so much nicer just to going into our work environments and feeling oh i'm so freaking excited to see ben to see jessica i work with the best team um and um so and each of and each and every one of us are responsible for creating those cultures there's a quote by rumi that i really really like it says yesterday i was clever so i wanted to change the world but today i'm wise so i'm changing myself and although the concept of change is really, really scary, it shouldn't be. Because I think the small things we do on a daily basis can make, can, uh, can compound and make a huge impact for the future of water and wastewater. Um, and then the, the, the third thing is being proactive and not wait, waiting on others. Like I, I think as, um, again, as someone who is, works more like as a minority in this industry, um, I shouldn't be waiting for other people to like start promoting. I'm like, no, if, if I, if there's, if I can open a door for someone and let them, uh, let them know about this amazing, awesome environment so that they can start a career in for themselves. Why not? Let's do it. And I think if you are you, now, you guys have also the testimony of a happy girl who works in water and wastewater. So if someone asks you, so how do women feel in water and wastewater? You can be like, you know what? There was a girl, she was crazy. She loved it. Um, so, so you can, that's, that, that can be your way of like opening doors for people. Right. Cause, um, so be proactive. Don't wait for others to see the change. And the last one is, um, the willingness to serve. I think, again, we live in a society in this day and age that we are waiting for everyone else to serve on us and serve servantship means so many different things and different factors. I, every day that I walk into work, I choose to be the best server of my my coworkers, but my, I'm not the best at it. Like sometimes I can be pretty selfish and I'm like, I don't want to talk to anyone. Don't talk to me today. I just want to get to my emails. I don't want to work. That's a different story. But I'm, so what I'm saying is that if we pursue excellence on a daily basis and we try to be our best, I think willingness to serve can take us a long way. Um, and then lastly, you're like, okay, Parmita, these are all great. Where can we start? Where can we start to get to know ourselves better? And where can we start to get to know other people better or our coworkers better so that we can start that change and so that we can start that um, personal development or sorry, personal leadership uh, journey? 
I have a book suggestion. I'm going to end my presentation here. And it's called, this book is called Wired That Way. This has cha changed me a lot and helped me a lot and changed it not in a bad way. But um, based on this book, I am a sanguine, meaning that I'm life of the party. I am extremely loud, as if you can't tell. Uh, I've been trying to tone myself down. Uh, and I love to make friends and just like be, that's why I got into sales. I love talking to people. Anyways, that's how important. Uh, but I learned that through this uh, book, Wired That Way, there are four different personality types and not everyone I came across is like me. And sometimes I can be a little too much for them. So I learned how to tone myself down, how to connect with people uh, with different personalities. Some people are calmer. They're more, um, what is it called? What's that word? Um, introverted, introverted, and um, and it's and it's okay, and they're different from me, but I just learned ways to connect with them, and uh, yeah, that's something I I want to leave you guys with that. That um, I think we feel the more we learn about ourselves, and I know that like yeah, getting a lot of um CEUs are they called yeah okay, uh, getting a lot of CEUs and develop like upgrading our technical skills that is great, but what what about our brain? What about our personal development journey? And I know you guys are probably thinking, oh my God, what is she talking about? Personal development. Personal development who? Um, I think it's very important. And I really wish that I was, uh, I could have been able to uh, attend the talk, the, the keynote speaker this morning, because I think he was an NFL coach. And I think he had a lot of great things to do, uh, great things to say. But in order for us to create great environments, strong teams and welcoming teams, we're going to start with ourselves. Hopefully, I didn't bore you. I'm going to change my tone now so that you guys all wake up. Um, and yeah, I'm going to end my presentation here. Um, I'm going to open the, open the room for any questions. Um, yeah. That's it. Is there any questions in the room? Um, I have a question. So uh, I really like the idea of self-leadership and I think it can really benefit people at all stages of their career. Do you have any advice for like mentoring people and promoting self-leadership to kind of like take ownership of their own journeys for like maybe more junior staff? I'm not sure if I un uh, understood your question. Can you repeat that again or yeah. clarify it? <laughs> um, yeah, I think the idea of like self-leadership is very important for people to kind of take ownership of their careers in the beginning and maybe like invest themselves into their jobs instead of just kind of like showing up and doing what they're told do you have any tools to kind of mentor people for self-leadership and promote it um i think one of the best tools and underused tools we have are books and i know that sounds very cliche and classic but books are freaking phenomenal I was scarred for life when I graduated from university I'm like I'm not gonna touch any other book because I'm just um but I think books are great I think if you are a senior in your company and you see someone that has a lot of potential build that relationship with them also so they can trust you and I think when people see that you're genuinely interested in them and you want to help them they they get excited they get motivated they're like oh like I know Ian I know Ian and he's an awesome guy and I know he wants to help me so I go to work more excited and um, I want I want I want to help him right because helping him is going to help me right um, but I think one 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 I, I and you know what I think this is something that companies can invest more into their employees by having just um, a um, some sort of personal development class or extra curriculum every once in a blue moon and um, showing the employees resources and books and or at lunch breaks instead of scrolling on our social media I know I am a Gen Z borderline millennial um, I am on my social media scrolling my Instagram however I do think that it's a great idea if you put books in our lunch rooms and letting people read them just just let it sit there and at some point someone's gonna pick it up and then go through it or if you come across something that's very interesting, share it with your team. That's what I think. Awesome. Any more questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Parmita. Give her a round of applause. Yeah. Thank you for having me.